Good morning. My name is Bo Rutledge, and I'm the Dean of the University of Georgia School of Law. To all of you who are attending today, graduates, family, and friends, I know that today is both a great celebration and a little bit bittersweet. On March 6, when the class of 2020 departed for spring break, none of us could imagine that they would return to a place where they couldn't complete their academic term on campus. The class of 2020 has been unfairly deprived of the rituals to which they've rightly earned their opportunity. Whether it was the EJF auction, the Edith House lecture, the day's party, or countless other informal celebrations. For many, it has been difficult. For some, truly tragic. And yet, throughout it all, you've endured. To the class of 2020, let there be no doubt. Today is your day. While the live celebration might be postponed because of the pandemic, your accomplishments are your own. They will endure. They will be part of your legacy. Over the last several weeks and months, you've been role models of grit and resilience, skills that will serve you well, just as they have served countless graduates before you whose rituals and celebrations were upset, whether by wars, pandemics, depressions, or some other form of upheaval. In these last weeks, I've often thought about Edith House, one of our first female graduates, a native of Winder, Georgia. She decided at the age of 13 that she wanted to attend law school. And a mere six years later, she enrolled at your law school the University of Georgia School of Law. To support her studies, she tutored blind students while in school. And when those funds ran out, she took out a loan to complete her education. When she graduated as co-valedictorian of her class, despite these and countless other barriers, she went on to a storied career, serving more than three decades as a federal prosecutor, culminating in her appointment as the first female United States attorney in the history of the state of Florida. Edith House's legacy was one of excellence and professionalism. And let there be no doubt, members of the class of 2020, you will leave your legacy on this school just like Edith House did. Your class will be the first in the history of the entire law school where the editors in chief of all three journals were women. Yours will be the class that in the history of the state of Georgia had two law students appear in front of the state Supreme Court and win their case. Your class was the one that introduced to us International Night. Your class was the one that helped to establish the First Generation Student Association. Your class was the one that helped to establish the Stonewall Equality Scholarship. Your class finally brought back to Athens the Attorney General's Trophy and the Legal Food Frenzy. Your class won the National Moot Court Championship. And your class contributed over 100,000 hours to helping the legally underserved members of our community. Congratulations. Whatever's happened over the last eight weeks, take pride in those accomplishments. Bask in the happiness that you feel from having been a part of that legacy. And as the author David Brooks reminds us, remember that you didn't get here alone. All of us on our own individual journeys are accompanied by Sherpas, whether they're family members, spouses, relatives, grandparents, friends, or mentors. They should take pride in your accomplishment right now. They're not thinking of themselves, but they're thinking of you. And whether they're by your side or zooming in, take a moment right now and thank them. Tell them you love them. Remember that they were there for you. And one day when you're in their shoes, be there for someone in the next generation and share in their joy. And know that the joy is one that is shared by all of us at the law school today. 
On behalf of the 125 staff and faculty at the law school, we'll always be here for you. Just a phone call or a group me away. As you get ready to accept your degree, may you find some comfort in the words that Edith House shared at the age of 82, nearly two decades after her retirement, decorated for years of government service, commended by Attorney General Bobby Kennedy and the director of the FBI. Here were her words. I've kept up my Florida bar membership and I read the law journals, play a little poker and plant a few tomatoes. I used to walk to the beach every day, but now that's become a little bit more difficult. I still like to see friends and I still like to drive my car, though not at night. I still think that the law is an incredible profession. As you rightly celebrate your accomplishments and as you think about the road that lies ahead, may the words of Edith House and her legacy be an inspiration and a lifeline to you, even in your moments of doubt. Congratulations. And now, it's my honor to introduce your class president, Mr. Jack Donlin. A native of Memphis, Tennessee, Mr. Donlin has held a host of elective offices during his time at the law school, on the Student Bar Association, and as 3L class president. Following graduation, Mr. Donilon will be serving in the Public Defender's Office in Dalton, Georgia. Good morning. With all the craziness that's been going on in the world recently, it may not feel like today is a big day, but it is. Today marks a major accomplishment that is the result of many, many years of hard work for many people. Earning your law degree isn't easy. You get to campus on your first day, confident that four years of high school and four years of college have adequately prepared you to be successful in law school. And then you sit through your first law school cold call. Mine, for instance, was on the second day of school, courtesy of Dean Weeks, thank you for that. You realize that you may be the dumbest person ever to sit in that classroom. I've waited three years for that feeling to go away and it's still hanging around. Pause for laughter. But now all of that is over and I think there are a few important things to remember about law school graduation. The first thing is that all the people who are receiving degrees today should be celebrating themselves. I've gotten to witness all of the accomplishments of the UGA Law Class of 2020 firsthand over the past three years and this is an incredible group of people that we get to honor today. From unbridled academic excellence to repeated and comprehensive advocacy success to the rise in national rankings that Georgia Law has seen over the past three years, this class has really done it all, and it's done it while maintaining a close sense of camaraderie. That is something to be celebrated. The second important thing to remember about today is that none of us got here on our own. Even if you don't know it, I promise you there are folks out there who have been pulling for you behind the scenes and supporting you since long before you set foot on campus. As we celebrate ourselves today, we need to thank those who helped us along the way. Personally, so many people have helped me get where I am today, have helped me get where I am today, excuse me. My family, my friends and neighbors, coaches, teammates, former employers and coworkers, high school teachers, undergrad professors at the University of Tennessee, law school faculty and staff at the University of Georgia, and of course, my classmates. Without all of these people in my corner, I would have fallen flat on my face time and time again. And for that, I cannot thank you enough. My mother is filming this right now, helping me put together my law school graduation speech. Thanks, Mom. If you're graduating today, remember to thank the people in your life who've invested in your success. Now that we're here at the end of the line, we've all been given the proverbial tools of success. But a first-class legal education comes with a price that's greater than just the price of tuition. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but to whom much has been given, much will be required. This graduating class is a brilliant, talented group of individuals and we've just been given one hell of an education. Now it's time for us to use those talents, talents and skills that we've been given for good. Invest in your community. Mentor those that come behind you. Help people that can't help themselves. Brace yourself, here comes the cheesy part. We are the future of the legal community. There are many people who will look to us for guidance in the future and it's on us. We owe it to them to lead by example. Finally, even though it may not mean much, I just want to express how proud I am of everyone who's graduating today. Law school isn't fun. 
Sometimes it really sucks. But you all made it through, and I'm proud and grateful to have gone through it with you. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. The only thing I regret about finishing law school online and having a virtual graduation is that I won't be able to share the stage with the 200 or so people who made this journey worthwhile for me. So thank you all and congratulations. Now, I'm very pleased to introduce our 2020 commencement speaker, Chief Judge Sri Srinivasan. Chief Judge Srinivasan was appointed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit in May 2013 and became Chief Judge on February 12, 2020. Born in Chandigarh, India and raised in Lawrence, Kansas, he received a BA from Stanford University, a JD from Stanford School of Law, and an MBA from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Following graduation, he served as a law clerk to Judge J. Harvey Wilkinson III of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit, as a Bristol Fellow in the Office of the U.S. Solicitor General, and as a law clerk to the U.S. Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. In 1998, he joined the law firm O'Melveny & Myers. From 2002 to 2007, he served as an assistant to the, list, to the Solicitor General. In 2007, he returned to O'Melveny & Myers as a partner, later becoming chair of the firm's appellate and Supreme Court practices. From 2011 until his appointment to the U.S. Court of Appeals, Chief Judge Srinivasan served as the principal deputy solicitor general of the United States. He has argued 25 cases before the U.S. Supreme Court. He has also taught appellate advocacy at Harvard Law School as well as a seminar on civil rights statutes in the Supreme Court at Georgetown, Georgetown University Law Center. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so delighted to have Chief Judge Srinivasan. It's such a privilege to be asked by your class leadership to address you, the University of Georgia Law School's graduating class of 2020. Heartiest congratulations to each of you and to your families on your achievement we commemorate on this special day. We're of course celebrating you in a unique way amidst unprecedented circumstances. I'd so look forward to coming to Athens to celebrate your accomplishment with all of you in person. I'd want to meet you, shake your hands, and convey directly to you how proud of yourselves you each should be. And also to take in and echo the deep pride your families and loved ones undoubtedly feel in you. I'm disappointed that the circumstances won't allow that kind of gathering. I know a little of what you may be feeling from my own twins' experience this year. They're not quite as far along as you, but they, like you, are the class of 2020. They're high school seniors and they've been eagerly awaiting the spring of their senior year for a long time, with prom, senior trip, and graduation celebrations on the horizon, and with expectations of just hanging out with friends and basking in the glow of the end of their school years together. Now, they're keeping distance from their friends and classmates in a time when they'd anticipated intense togetherness. They fully realize how incredibly fortunate they and we are relative to so many, too many, who've suffered profound hardship, dislocation, and loss. But they can't help but be disappointed to miss out on the senior class year-end celebrations they assumed were ahead, including a commencement ceremony. You might well understandably feel the same way. And for your families who may be watching alongside you today, I, as a parent with class of 2020 kids of my own, have a sense of your complexity of emotions. Wonder at how the time has flown by and how these students have so rapidly come of age tremendous pride in their drive and accomplishment, mixed with a measure of disappointment that we can't share our mutual pride and toast the graduates together in a gathering of the kind we've long assumed would mark the culmination of this journey for them. But we all know this about you graduates. The lack of a traditional commencement ceremony today in no way diminishes the significance of your achievement in obtaining your law degree, the need to celebrate it, or the distinct pride each of you should feel in yourselves quite the opposite. You will go down in the annals of the University of Georgia Law School as a unique, singular class, one that confronted and surmounted challenges like no class before you. You'd done wonderful things before the pandemic caused such unprecedented dislocation. You'd won the National Moot Court competition over teams from 120 other schools. You'd appeared in real court too, including in the court on which I now sit. And most importantly, each of you worked extremely hard to earn the degree bestowed upon you today. All of that is eminently worth recognizing and celebrating, and we do that every year as we should. But then, in the midst of your final year, you face sudden, thoroughgoing disruption to your academic studies, 
to your school and social experience, and to your lives, and to the lives of everyone you know. Yet you found a way to adjust and to persist undaunted. You continued to attend classes remotely. You took exams and wrote papers. You still appeared for hearings, both live and by remote connection, in your clinical programs. And you figured out ways to continue meeting with your clients and zealously representing them. That imagination, commitment, and doggedness, and I'm spelling doggedness here with a D-A-W-G, is a great testimony to you. It reflects so well on you and will serve you exceedingly well as you move on from here. There's real uncertainty in the world you're entering upon graduation, and that uncertainty naturally carries with it a significant measure of anxiety about what lies ahead. That's entirely understandable, and it's reflective of a broader uncertainty that confronts so many of us in today's conditions. But your ability to earn your degree amidst that uncertainty bodes so well for you in the future. I can say from my own experience that what you've learned in school, the way you've learned it, the give and take in class and in your clinics, the writing, the speaking, the conversations with students and faculty both inside and outside the classroom, the practical experiences you've had in school and in your summer programs, all have prepared you for what lies ahead far more than you can now appreciate. That's true of every graduating class. But for you, on top of all that, you've had to face head on the unprecedented environment in which we find ourselves, which is why I'm addressing you by recorded video instead of speaking live to all of you gathered together in Athens. The fact that we must celebrate you in this way today is a testament to the significance of your achievement and the singularity of your experience getting here. You should own that, cherish it, wear it with pride and satisfaction, and understand that it makes you special and fixes on you a unique stamp of commendation. When we think of Bulldogs, we think of tenacity, especially in the face of challenge. That's uniquely you, the Go Dogs Law Class of 2020. In the midst of our celebrating you and setting high expectations about your path ahead, let me offer one request of you as you go forward, especially in this time of unprecedented physical and social separation. That's this. As we celebrate the best in you, let's resolve to assume the best in others, too. Your coming of age and starting your professional lives in an era of increasing skepticism, cynicism, and polarization. It's easy and natural nowadays to assume the very worst in those with whom we disagree, whether the party on the other side of a lawsuit or those with differing views about issues of the day. We can retreat, retreat to our own corner with our own team and assume that only we understand and see things rightly and in an enlightened way, and that those who see things differently are not only wrong, but obviously so, and they just don't or can't understand and refuse to do so, and that it's hopeless to try to engage with them. We can ascribe to them not just incorrectness, but ignorance, and often even malevolence. As a judge who aspires to weigh all sides in respectful deliberation, and to acknowledge that my own way of perceiving things is not at all infallible, I'd ask you not to be too quick to judge. Engage and approach each other's with humility and an open mind. Prepare to learn and be moved and comport yourself in a way that moves others to approach you with the same respect, humility, and open-mindedness. That can be particularly difficult when we're apart physically and socially, as is so often the case today because of considerations beyond our control. When we don't or can't directly engage with one another in everyday interaction, it's that much easier to reduce one another to mere abstractions and to assume the worst in one another. Resist that temptation. Assume good faith instead of bad faith. Be open to learning and growing through respectful engagement with those who experience and perceive the world differently. That kind of respectful engagement is a fundamental hallmark of the practice of law at its best. And I'd suggest that it should be a fundamental attribute of your lives more generally. That's how we can give ourselves the best chance to move past what can otherwise seem intractable disagreement and paralysis in a time in which we face tremendous and sometimes unparalleled challenges. I'll close by encapsulating my message to you like this. You should be exceedingly proud of yourselves today, and you should act towards others in a way you'll be exceedingly proud of going forward. If you do so, as the stewards of our profession, we'll all be so much the better for it. Congratulations again to you, the most special class of 2020. Thank you for letting me share in this day with you and all the very best to you in the days ahead. Hello, 
My name is Ellie Lanier, and I've had the honor of serving as the Associate Dean for UGA Law's Clinic and Experiential Learning Programs for the past two years. And I'm here with a message for our 2020 graduates, and also for those who love and support you. Graduates, I am so incredibly proud of you. I've seen the countless hours you've devoted to your clinical and experiential learning work. I've seen you dig deep to continue to serve, even despite the uncertainties of this spring semester. I've seen you bring your best selves to your clients and your work, and I thank you for that. And I believe I speak for all of my colleagues when I say that even though our spring semester plans changed pretty dramatically and we weren't able to be together, you found creative ways to continue to serve despite the disruption. And I actually, and probably not surprisingly, have written a haiku for you. So here we go. For our graduates, as you walk this path, stay true to your values, whatever may come. They're your honor code, foundation for your life's work. You have been tested. You are at your best when your head and heart align. Here lies your power. I want to thank you. I hope to see you soon when it's safe to do so. And a hearty congratulations. At this time, it's my honor to officially confer degrees on the class of 2020. While we are not gathered together in person, we are with each other in spirit and purpose. By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. You are now alumni of the University of Georgia, and we look forward to celebrating your accomplishments in the months ahead. For now, please accept my heartfelt best wishes on this tremendous achievement. Thank you, congratulations, and go dogs! And now to present the candidates for the degree Master in the Study of Law, the Director of the Academic Enhancement Program and Faculty Advisor to the MSL Program, Professor Allison Hale. Brittany Renee Atkins. Ineke C. Butler. Savannah L. Garrett. Shamika Gibson. Ethiopia A. Kibeti. Monarchy L. Keller. Sonia Lee Coggins. Brunel Parks. Anna Lee Stone. Jayla Tibbs. And now to present the candidates for the degree Master of Law, Associate Director of the Dean Rusk International Law Center, Dr. Laura Coggle. Jessica E. Atatigo. Ezra Idinos. Yancy M. Castro Guerrero. Cindy Paula Hawkins Prada. Mohammed A. 
Eckbar. Mabuba Islam. Emmanuel Che. Romario A. Lee. Xiang Liu. Tamina Al Sadat Madani. Florence Nalaquago. Gordon O. Odua. Kingsley Opia and Wamuche. Maisha Tassin. Ryan A. Yassin. Chi Zhang. And now to present the candidates for the degree Juris Doctor. Caldwell Professor of Constitutional Law and University Professor Dan Coonan. An Assistant Professor of Law Sandy Mason. Professor Mason and I are deeply honored to be serving as graduation marshals for the class of 2020. You have faced unusually significant challenges in working to reach this very special day. To each of you and to all the loved ones who have helped you along the way, we offer our heartfelt congratulations. Eric Shelton Abney. Cephala Sufian Ahmed. Andrea Gisela Aldana. Sydney Quinn Aronson. Bryce Hosford Bailey. Arthur Jordan Balin. Stroud Fuller Baker. Victoria Heather Barbino. Thomas Augustine Dossie Biro. Daniel Bart. Louis A. Bastone. Rachel Morgan Bennett. Miranda Sue Biddinger. William James Blunt. Joy Darielle Bonner. Olivia Carol Bowman. Sawyer Warren Burkhalter. Jacob McMahon Burr. William Watley Batty Bush Jr. Lee Aaron Butler. Brooke Ann Carrington. Maria 
Mercedes, Carruthers, Ferrero. Hayden Lee Chapman. Mackenzie Drake Corbin. Caroline Beckwith Daly. Kevin Michael Davis. Andrea Jane Dimick. Deanna Soledad DiMarco. Deshaun Akilan Dixon. Grant Duan. Jack Lewis Donlan. Connor W. Dooley. Eleanor Brogan Easton. Sonia O. Eboigby. Gretchen Elizabeth Edelman. Maria Elizabeth Elliott. Chelsea Renee Fiegel. Zoe Natasha Ferguson. Landon Fogel. Carly Lane Fulp. Grace Ann Garner. Daniel Scott Garrett. Holly Ann Gartrell. Joel D. Glaze. Daniel William Gokel. Lucas D. Getke. Graham Paul Goldberg. Mandy Elizabeth Goodman. Brittany Gowan. Amber D. Greenaway. Greg Greenberg. Matthew Brian Hall. Sydney A. Hamer. Blake Hamill. Emma Sophia Noel Hamlet. Philip R. Harris. Caroline Joanne Harvey. Samuel L. Hatcher. John Dustin J.D. Hawkins, Jr. Andrew K. Heaton.
Nashad Hegdi. Ashley Lauren Henson. Leah R. Hibbler. Charles Edward Hicks. Megan Elizabeth Howard. Haley J. Hudler. Lindsay Hughes. David Jackson Ion. Matthew F. Isihara. Hyo Suk Jang. Gi Uk Jung. Robert Tanner Johnston. Hannah Cecilia Karimapur. Jonathan Kaufman. William C. Kearney. Adam Chase Keith. John Lex Kennerly the Fourth. Samuel Connor Kennan. Karen Jean Kirchanan. Houston Willis Kessler. Edward Wiley Kaloran the Third. Jacob Z. Kirkland. Andrew J. Clem. Jordan A. Clump. Alice S. Kuak. Adeline Kennerly Lambert. Chris P. Larson Jr. Catherine Marie Larson. Nicole Marie Lodick. Jonathan Michael LaCroix. Rachel A. Levenstein. Lauren Elizabeth Lisowskis. Class of 2020, my first law students. You have worked so hard to get here. Thank you for all that you have brought to the law school, to your peers, to your professors, and thank you for the skill, the energy, and the compassion you bring to the practice of law. Congratulations. Samuel T. Lowe. Maria Liu. Zachary Porter Tanton Lundgren. Charlotte 
Lou. Chase Christian Lindale. Cody Lyons. Fernanda Isabel McKay. Gina Marie Mackey. Jackson Choate Mansour. Mariana Lynn Markley. Morgan Elizabeth Mason. Tyler Chase Graham Mathis. Caitlin Felt May. Catherine Adele McClintock. William Coleman McFerrin. Sarah A. McGee. Aaron Page McGonigal. Caroline Jenkins Melton. Miles Brockman Mitchell. Jalen A. Mize. Elizabeth Overton Moore. Hamid Muradi Rudpashti. Nicholas A. Muggy. Madeline May Neal. James Jeffrey Netter. Hewell McKinley O'Kelly IV. Judson Bryant Oliver. William Daniel Ortiz. Thomas Haney Paris IV. Shivani Hanal Patel. Sean D. Patterson. Abby Caroline Peavy. Benjamin D. Perkins. Leslie M. Perkins. William Christopher Phillips. Savannah Brianne Finney. Alana Pierce. Ariel Joan Pinsky. Catherine Burke Plumley. Sarah Frances Plunkett. William Bernard Padres III. Robert L. Poston.
Samana Porhasan. Caitlin Marie Burns Powers. Gregory Gardner Preston. Jordan Rawlings Price. Chelsea Sharon Lynn Clyde Reese. Anne M. Reynolds. James Lyle Richards III. Chelsea Nyoka Ryerson. Ethan Joseph Rohde. Sarah Christine Rosenhoover. Teresa Ashley Ross. Selena Julia Santiago. Joseph R. Scarborough. Robert Elton Schaff. Paul M. Scott. Amy Elizabeth Sheehan. Hina Shin. Mary Ellen Schumann. Roxana Louise Simons. Addison Smith. Nicole H. Song. Jonathan Leonhardt Spratling. Amelia Caroline Stevens. Savannah Jane Story. Joseph Hubert Sturenberg. Stephanie June Stutz. Devon James Luke Swanson. Brianne Gray Taylor. Matthias Teixeira. Carter Austin Thomas. George William Thomas. Carter Tilashalski. Elizabeth Wilmot Torres. Rachel D. Tropper. Georgia Lee Turner. Reed Harris Turry. Andrew Tyner. Justin Corey Van Orsdal. Lindsay Michelle Vinson.
Dan H. Vo. Charles Reed Wedding. Slayton Wheeler. David A. Whiteley. Haley Elizabeth Williams. Demi Willis. Tabitha M. Wolf. Spencer D. Woody. Robert William Gordon Wright. Alicia Zinchenko. Congratulations, members of the class of 2020. You did it. My hope for each of you is that your joy is as undiminished as the legacy that you leave the law school. Go make a difference in the world. Make someone's life better. Look out for each other, not just in the good times, but in the worst ones. And know that each and every step of the way, we're here to cheer you along, along this next stage of your journey. Good luck, and we'll see you in Athens later this year.